Hello friends, welcome to Thyroid Physiology Part 2. Now this video is in continuation to the previous video. In the previous video, we had discussed the basic functional anatomy of the thyroid gland, talked about how the hormones are produced, what are these hormones, what are the basic functions, what are the important aspects of the hormone uh, in uh, regulation of body's metabolism. Now let's go uh, a little bit deeper and in this video I'm more interested in talking about what might happen if there is excess of thyroid hormone or what might happen if there is a deficiency of thyroid hormone. Now but before I talk about that I want to take you back to the slide where we left off the previous video. Now this is what we were discussing the variety of uh, functions that thyroid hormones contribute to and I told you how it is very important and crucial in brain development during the fetal life and uh, infancy. So of course if there is a fetus who is having deficiency of thyroid hormones or if there is deficiency, severe deficiency in uh, uh, infancy, then obviously the brain development, the um, psychomotor development is going to be also poor. So there can be mental retardation, there can be um, poor IQ, low IQ, and there can be severe growth uh, retardation also, something that we call as cretinism in childhood, right? Now, when you talk about the effects of growth on, uh, sorry, the effects of thyroid hormone on growth, then that is more particularly relevant and more important in young children, okay? So when there is a thyroid hormone deficiency, it is understandable that yes, growth is going to be restricted, delayed, retarded, pubertal development can be delayed. But what happens when there is excess of thyroid hormones? When there is excess of thyroid hormones, there is an initial rapid growth, okay, an excess growth that we see. So initially, yes, the person could be taller, the child could be taller. But bones that grow faster, they also mature faster. Epiphyseal closure is also achieved earlier. So overall the duration of growth is shortened. So eventually the height can be stunted. So with this introduction into how it can affect the growth and the mental development, I will leave this for the discussion of uh, pediatrics and I don't want to go into those, uh, the details of cretinism and growth and development, but I want to focus in general about how are you going to identify adult patients, uh, what kind of symptoms can there be with different kinds of thyroid disorders. So talking about that, let's just establish something very basic that when there is a deficiency deficiency of thyroid hormone production from the thyroid gland, we call it as hypothyroidism, right? And we can very well say that with hypothyroidism, metabolism slows down, right? On the other hand, when there is excess production of thyroid hormones, we call it as hyperthyroidism. And when that happens, metabolism increases. Come to think of it, our body maintains a balance between energy requirement, energy production. Right? So, we have our basal metabolic rate. Now, when the hormone production is excessive, then we are over consuming. Right? We are over metabolizing. Right? We are creating more of calories, generating more of calories than are actually needed. So, what happens? Excess T3 and or, or T4. Excess metabolism. Okay, what are we metabolizing? Our resources, excess breakdown of fats and proteins, muscle wasting, weight loss 
that is what we are looking at excess metabolism heat production increased in the body we have more heat production than we might be able to deal with if heat is produced it needs to be dissipated increased dissipation of heat and our body does that by increasing the sweating excess metabolism vasodilatation in the tissues excessive flushing of the skin and that is described as warm flushed skin sweaty palms right and uh, all this excess metabolism excess blood flow into the metabolizing tissues have to be met by increased cardiac output and increased heart rate so when you look at the symptoms apart from the overline that i gave you yes there are certain symptoms pertaining to the central nervous system also so thyroid hormones are responsible for mental alertness and you know brain metabolism also so we have symptoms like excitability irritability inability to sleep insomnia whenever there is excess of thyroid hormone production in our body that is hyperthyroidism you can see this diagrammatic representation of a person who is emaciated standing on a weighing scale holding a cup in his hand sweating the hell out so there is of course a lot of sweating and increased production of heat in the body so heat intolerance heat intolerance tremors now these are fine tremors okay these are not tremors like that of parkinsonism but fine tremors tachycardia increased sweating weight loss muscle wasting look at the thin legs look at the loosened trousers right diarrhea thyroid hormone increases gi motility so diarrhea so these are the symptoms of hyperthyroidism and also what we can see in the image here is protruding eyeballs what we call as oxophthalmos so for reasons uh, that are incompletely understood but what has been suggested that there is edema in the retroorbital soft tissues that push the eyeball forward there is also uh, some myopathy and you know muscle wasting at the level of the extra ocular muscles and that leads to this protruding eyeball and uh, the lid is not uh, you know uh, closing the eyeball completely the eyelid is not closing the eyeball completely blinking is also delayed so all in all dry eye and its associated symptoms so there can be ophthalmologic manifestations of hyperthyroidism as well now if you compare this the whatever i told you and go with the exact opposite you will come to what we call as thyroid deficiency so what will be the symptoms of thyroid deficiency then hypothyroidism well there will be excessive fatigue because uh, metabolism has slowed down not enough calories as required are being generated there is slowness both physical and mental slowness right so there is an ability to concentrate there is uh, you know delayed reflexes as well so both physical and mental slowness um excessive sleepiness something that we call as somnolence right there is going to be um cold intolerance instead right less heat production by the body there is going to be constipation instead there is going to be bradycardia slow reflexes muscle weakness now don't confuse it with muscle uh, wasting there is muscle weakness stiffness and cramps you can see this lady holding on to her leg she's having cramps weight gain instead and hair loss these are some of the common clinical symptoms of hypothyroidism in long standing untreated hyperthyroidism you see if initially there is tachycardia yes of course but with long standing uncontrolled uh, untreated excess thyroid hormones there is eventually going to be muscle wasting and this muscle wasting uh, will also involve the cardiac muscles so cardiac myopathy sets in 
and eventually these uh, patients with hyperthyroidism at future risk of cardiac decompensation as well. Now let us talk about another uh, clinical symptomatology with hypothyroidism which we call as myxedema. Okay. Now what is myxedema? We can see that there may be a facial puffiness and this facial puffiness and edema is basically because of increased deposition of uh, hyaluronic uh, acid and you know uh, hyaluron sulfate and chondroitin sulfate in the connective tissue layer. So this is more like a gel like collection therefore it is a non-pitting edema. Okay, and there will be a dry uh, scaly skin as well. So yes, we can have this with a severe untreated hypothyroidism, a manifestation which we call as myxedema. Increased cholesterol can also happen, increased serum cholesterol with hypothyroidism. And with the long-standing untreated hypothyroidism, there is also a future, you know, increased uh, risk of uh, atherosclerosis and uh, coronary artery disease also. Now let us talk about how thyroid hormones, they affect the menstrual cycle function, okay. So both hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism, both types of thyroid disorders can lead to a variety of menstrual cycle disturbances. I'm seeing disturbances. Why? Because um, there can be anovulatory cycles, irregular cycles, excess menstrual bleeding, heavy bleeding, irregular bleeding, amenorrhea, a variety of clinical manifestations of hormonal imbalances and menstrual cycle irregularities can be seen both with hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism. Now, uh, you know, excess or deficiency of thyroid hormones can lead and can interfere with the metabolism of ovarian steroid hormones like estrogen and progesterone. They can interfere with the protein binding of estrogen and progesterone in circulation. They can interfere with the levels of sex hormone binding globulins in circulation. So thereby, they bring about a complex of interactions which leads to these menstrual cycle disturbances. Now, let us understand a little bit more in detail about these disorders and to be able to do that, we first need to understand how our body regulates the thyroid hormone production by the thyroid glands, meaning thyroid gland releases free T3 and free T4 into the blood circulation. These are the metabolically active forms of the hormones. It is the free T3 which acts on the tissues and therefore it is very crucial and important to keep the free forms of these hormones in circulation under normal levels. Agreed? Now, when I am talking about measurement in blood, I am more concerned about the free T4 levels because anyways, the levels of free T3 in circulation are very less as compared to free T4 levels. So, I am more concerned when measuring blood values about free T4 levels. Now, let us understand and call this the thyroid axis. Okay, so hypothalamus secretes thyrotropin releasing hormone that acts on anterior pituitary that releases TSH in response and TSH uh, acts on the thyroid gland to release more free hormones into circulation. These free hormones in circulation are going to increase the metabolism at the cellular level. Right? So yes, when the metabolism increases, right, our body senses it and therefore it needs to keep the levels of this free T3 and free T4 under control, under normal level. So it is like a feedback regulation, feedback control. So when the cellular metabolism is increased, it is going to send a negative feedback to the higher centers, hypothalamus and TSH, negative feedback. TSH will decrease and the 
free hormone levels will decrease thus normalizing the free hormone levels in circulation the opposite will happen when the levels of free t3 and free t4 in circulation are less the opposite will happen when the levels are less there will be decrease in cellular metabolism this negative feedback won't be there instead it will be sensed by the pituitary it will be a sort of a positive feedback increase in tsh increase in free t3 free t4 and thus normalization of free t3 and t4 levels in circulation so feedback control is there to keep the free hormones in circulation under normal levels now when a body is exposed to cold temperatures and environments it is required by a body to increase metabolism to increase the body temperature right so exposure to cold stimulates the hypothyroid and the anterior pituitary to release more tsh okay on the contrary anxiety and stress they tend to inhibit the higher centers to decrease the hormone production these are certain situations when our body feels that there is a need to conserve energy right conserve metabolism so that is why inhibition of the thyroid axis once this feedback mechanism is understood we can now focus on what happens with hypothyroidism or why would there be thyroid hormone deficiency thyroid hormone deficiency can be because of um, iodine deficiency it can be because of destruction of thyroid gland like we discussed in the previous video autoimmune thyroiditis all right it can happen because of destruction to the thyroid gland maybe because of any irradiation to the thyroid gland surgical removal of the thyroid gland or there can be something wrong with the thyroid axis here right there can be hypothyroidism secondary to anterior pituitary failure whatever may be the cause underlying reason whatever may be the reason for this anterior pituitary failure so the cause could be here the thyroid gland is not producing enough hormones or it is not getting enough tsh from the anterior pituitary and is not getting the signal to produce enough thyroid hormones whatever be the reason the symptoms are going to be because of decreased free t4 hormone levels all right so what will happen when the thyroid gland is not producing enough hormones the free t4 levels are going to fall right and that is going to send a feedback signal to the higher centers the pituitary and the hypothalamus a positive feedback signal and it is going to cause an increase in tsh that increase in tsh is going to drive the thyroid hormone to produce more hormones here so what we can have we will see that these levels may normalize agreed so now what is the situation in the situation the patient will be asymptomatic with low sorry with normal levels of free t4 hormone in circulation in the serum when you do a blood test but with increase in serum tsh levels 
and this is what we call as subclinical hypothyroidism so we identify subclinical hypothyroidism by checking the serum tsh levels that is a very sensitive first line test to screen for thyroid disturbances okay even though the free t4 levels have normalized because of this positive feedback loop we are able to call it subclinical hypothyroidism because it is this elevated tsh levels which are keeping the free hormone levels in circulation under normal range so what are the kind of patients since they are asymptomatic that we are screening for the possibility of finding subclinical hypothyroidism elderly women women who may have had a family history of patients men or women alike may have who may have had a, a family history of autoimmune uh, diseases right uh, patients and women who are having menstrual cycle disturbances infertility recurrent abortions these are the high risk groups that we are screening for thyroid disorders and one way to start is check the serum tsh levels because we may have subclinical hypothyroidism also now when the serum levels of pre t4 are low and the tsh levels are high this is what we call as overt or clinical hypo thyroidism and then lastly if the thyroid hormone deficiency is because of anterior pituitary failure if it is because of anterior pituitary failure then your tsh levels are also low and it is because of these low tsh levels that the thyroid gland even though it is normal is not producing enough thyroid hormones so free t4 levels are also low so clinically yes my dear friends this is how you're going to make a distinction as far as finding out the cause is concerned whatever be the underlying cause the treatment doesn't change because we need to give what is deficient so if there is thyroid hormone deficiency clinical hypothyroidism is there secondary to anterior pituitary failure there is clinically free t4 hormones are low so when your free t4 levels are low we need to give thyroid replacement and the thyroid replacement as we all know is given by levothyroxine and treatment that needs to be thyroid replacement treatment that needs to be taken on a daily basis now you must be wondering what is this thyroid swelling that we see here this pathological thyroid gland enlargement is what we call the goiter let's understand the physiology behind it goiter or pathological thyroid gland enlargement occurs in response to excessive gland stimulation the thyroid gland is required to produce this hormones it may or may not be able to do so but it is getting a signal from the higher centers the drive the stimulation to produce more hormones let's pick up an example let's say iodine deficiency let's say autoimmune thyroiditis hormone deficiency increased tsh gland getting the signal to produce more hormones but your iodine deficiency stays uncorrected there is autoimmune thyroiditis so the gland is not able to produce hormones yes but what is the gland doing it is just producing empty colloid just collecting colloid inside it 
thyroglobulin inside it in response to this excessive TSH stimulation, but no hormone production actually, just a colloid collection. That's why it's also called as the colloid goiter. Gland is unable to produce the hormones, getting the signals, unable to do so, just colloid enlargement of the thyroid gland and that is what we call as goiter, my dear friends. Similarly, now applying the same logic, you can understand what is happening with hyperthyroidism. Thyroid gland is somehow ending up producing increased amounts of free T4 and free T3. That is causing a negative feedback here and the TSH levels are low. So, they may end up normalizing the free hormone levels. So, we can have similarly subclinical hyperthyroidism with normal free T4 and low serum TSH levels. Subclinical hyperthyroidism is not uh, associated with adverse pregnancy outcome. It is not as dangerous as subclinical hypothyroidism. We can also have the clinical hyperthyroidism. Where the increased free T4 levels are at the same time associated with low serum TSH levels. A condition that we call as thyroid toxicosis and the most common cause for this condition is Graves disease. Now Graves disease is an autoimmune disease where there are thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins. Thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, thyroid stimulating autoantibodies in the circulation. Now, these are actually autoantibodies which are directed against the TSH receptor, against the TSH receptor which is present on the thyroid gland, but these are stimulating antibodies. So, there is a continual stimulation of the thyroid gland, even though the actuality, the serum TSH levels are low. But because of these autoantibodies, which are going to go and bind to the TSH receptor on the thyroid gland, and these are stimulating antibodies, there is continual stimulation of the TSH receptor. And therefore, excess of hormone production. And because the gland itself is continually stimulated, we get a toxic goiter. A situation of, again, pathological enlargement. But here we call it as a toxic goiter. Sometimes we also call it as a toxic nodular goiter. And all of this is discussed in detail in medicine. But as gynecologists also, it is important that we know at least the very basics because there are times when the patient, instead of going to the physician, may present with menstrual abnormalities to us in the gyne OPD. And therefore, we need to be aware of what is hypothyroidism, what is hyperthyroidism, what kind of additional symptoms are going to be there, what could be the underlying reason, at least this much basic information even practicing gynecologists should be having and keeping in mind. I hope you find this video useful. Very soon I will be also discussing thyroid physiology in pregnancy. So I hope you come up for that video too.